rather than sit by the ocean, we've opted to go into the woods and go and sit by a lake because the wind is a bit windy and I forgot my AirPods. But how perfect will this be? It will be lovely. And I'm glad we can share it together. We are wandering through the woods right now. It's quiet and still and quite peaceful and lovely. And if we can get past all these crowds, I think we should be able to find a spot just for us to sit and chat. If you are here to enjoy nature with me and Sasha, as well as talk about crafty things like knitting or sewing, um, perhaps you want to learn a little bit more about Alaska, you've found the right podcast. If, however, you are looking for a makeup or a hair tutorial and YouTube has shown you this, um, Real quick, I think I have on Carmex. I put it not just on my lips, but completely around and around my nose as well. Makeup is courtesy of yesterday and five hours of teaching dance, followed by a hot Epsom salt bath. And I failed to use that skincare regimen that I keep saying I'm going to. <laughs> and as far as the hair, um, thanks for asking. It's a scrunchie that I've had for four years that no longer has any elasticity in it at all. One bobby pin and Jamaican black castor oil. So, if that's what you came for, then um, there you go. <laughs> if you're here for a little bit more um, along the lines of being uh, a happy crafter, then stick with me. Actually, if you did come from a makeup and hair tutorial, please stick around anyway. You might find something that you really love. So, hey, I am Mel. I am very excited to be with you today. I am filming this in the forest in Kodiak, Alaska. I have some socks hanging in a tree because my dog, Sasha, has been enamored with them and has given them quite a ride all over this lush, green, mossy forest. Today I wanted to talk with you not just about knitting and not show you the progress on my second shifty sweater again. I'm wearing my first one, which I love. I knit my sweater. I knit my socks. <laughs> I sewed my apron dress. And I've got a few things I want to share with you today that are um, things that I've made from leftovers, scraps and scrappy bits. The first thing is a hat pattern that I've shared on the blog already. And oh, there's a chipmunk behind you to my right over your left. And it's just watching us. Usually they'll fuss at us. Uh, well, not us. Usually they fuss at Sasha. But um, anyways, so this is a kerchief hat. I've worn it before. I shared with you this free pattern 
on the blog um, post, I think it was just the one right before this. It uses just a little bit of scraps and I like it because if you read the story behind it on the blog post, um, using up little bits is something that has been passed on to me from my grandmother and my mother, um, as well as encouraged by a lot of my friends. So um, this uses up little scrappy bits and you could use one solid color. You could use two colors, you could make it a rainbow, um, but it's, it's kind of a simple way to use up things. These are just my mittens. Another thing that, let me show you the knitting first. These are examples of scrappy things that I have created. This sweater, if you look here, these colors here, and here at the bottom are in this sock. And these are my take on the shifty sweater, but more of shifty socks. I shared my notes on it also on the blog. Um, it was just a simple toe up construction with an afterthought heel. And I used, um, I actually held a strand of mohair with a bit of the spin cycle yarn that I used in my sweater left over in these socks. Um, it's the same textured pattern that you use in the sweater and it's so decadent. It's just squishy and it's, it's fun for your feet. Now these, these are little bits and bobs left over from some yarn that I get. Um, they were in a mini skein and I was making a mini skein cake to give to a friend. Actually, I was making a large cake out of mini skeins and I was weighing it and, and creating it intentionally. And I had this bit left over. And so all of these along the body are from a dyer named Kate Celine and she's out of um, the Cotswolds, I think. Yes, the Cotswolds. The heel and the cuff are Space Cadet leftovers from projects that I did. And I love taking little bits of scrappy things and turning them into something useful. What is it, love? Oh, you want these? No, you can't have these. The last thing I wanted to show you today, before I take you on a little romp through the forest, because that's really why we're here. Actually, Sasha and I did already we did about three miles and so we've got about two more before she's going to be good and tired. We were walking that way for quite some time and we saw bear scat. So we came up here nice and high so we can see around us, nestle in, the, in a safe place. Um, not that if we're safe we're fine. I'm, I'm not worried. I wanted to share with you not knitting, but some squares that I made out of fabric leftovers. This is a dress that I made with my mom. This paisley material is a dress my mom made for me when we lived on Oahu many years ago. Um, this here, if you see this, this was little bits of uh, pot holders that I made with a friend of mine in North Carolina. Oh my gosh, it's had to have been 15, 18, 20 years ago. And it's not that I'm a hoarder. I just have this can. Um, I have one that I put buttons in and then another that I put fabrics in. I just but, well, not a, it's a cookie tin. And I just wanted to show you guys these. Originally, and there's actually bits from um, projects that I did for 
some men in my life, um, like by men I mean husband, dad, grandfather, um, I originally thought I was going to use this for a quilt. And then I realized that I love it so much, each one of these, that I'm going to make something to wear out of it. I'm not sure what. I'm thinking maybe a dress. But if you look at the back, you can see I just pieced it together. I took one foundation piece, the starting point, and I put another one next to it, and then another one, and another one. And then I would try to use as much as I could, because some of my scraps, if you look, are itty bitty pieces. And I just feel proud of utilizing all that I have. It's very satisfying to know that you've either purchased yarn or fabric and or sometimes you get it as a gift um, someone shares it with you and you you use it which is great to make your first project but um, to, to reuse it and to use bits of it again and again and incorporate every last piece into something that you can use or share it just seems as if not only it's the logical way to utilize what we've been given but again it's just so satisfying to be a good steward of the resources that we have on hand and so I don't want to challenge you or make you feel like it's something that you have to implement in your life. I would never be so um, bold to overstep my boundaries to tell you that, but I would like to encourage you to share with me ways that you eke out every little bit of possibility of utilizing things, whether it's yarn or fabric or repurposing things from your closet, actual garments. Um, I'd love to hear what it is that you do to give longevity to things that you already have. So that's kind of my bit to share with you today. It's nothing groundbreaking, nothing I ever share with you is. But speaking of ground, we have a bit more to cover and I hope to take you along to the lake and then off to the ocean if it's not too windy. Um, I didn't bring my air pods so I'm recording this without having anything to boost the volume. Um, so we have to pick and choose carefully where we sit. Not just for sound quality, but also bear safety. <laughs> I'm really thankful that you took time out of your busy day, whether you're commuting or you're sitting and knitting a project, maybe you're sewing, maybe you're just relaxing, which you probably deserve that moment to just sit and relax. Whatever the reason is that you and I have been brought together to spend time, I appreciate you taking the time to sit with me out here in the woods and keep me company. I hope that your day is filled with peace and love and aloha. And I hope you realize that you are so valuable for so many different reasons and things that you make and do, people are eager to see and experience. So take care of you, take care of those around you and I hope our paths cross again very soon.
slide these out to give you a better view. Hopefully Sasha won't interfere. I know they don't look like a ton, but I'm super proud of them. <laughs> And I just love, like, you can see the textures. This eyelet is from a dress that my mom made for me in eighth grade. This is a pantsuit that I got. And it was so cute that I turned it into a dress for my daughter when she was, like, 11 months old. This wasn't enough, so I put this on the outside and there's a little tiny bit of the yellow. I was trying to use every little scrap. Sasha, do you wanna move your feet? This is the dress that I told you my mom made me when we lived on Oahu. <laughs> this, this, and this came from fabric for a quilting um, club that I didn't get a chance to make the block. It's like the block of the month. And so I didn't want that little bit to go to waste. And so I used it. And I am looking forward to using it. Look at her, she's just sitting on my stuff. She loves sitting. Who's a good sitter? Who is? Somebody's scared of the birds and the squirrels. So autumn along the beach, definite autumn colors. up our hike and headed back to the car. <laughs> 